Okay, welcome to Paraguay, even though we are in Mexico. <laughs> Thank you for your time and congratulations, the movie was great. Thank you. I love it. So how long does it take you to produce this movie? Uh, we've been working on it for six years. Ooh. Yeah, uh, September of 2011, um, we first pitched the idea to John Lasseter and uh, we've been working hard on it for six years. And how do you get the idea to make this movie about Mexico's traditions? Well, I'd, I had always been interested in Dia de Muertos. Um, I was exposed to it first through the beautiful artwork, the folk art and, and other art, the, the celebration. And when we finished Toy Story 3 and it was time to think about what to do next, we, we kicked around a few mm -hmm. different ideas and one of them was the idea of telling a story set against Dia de Muertos. And uh, I pitched that to John, he loved it. And um, we hopped on a plane and came down to Mexico to begin our research. Um, we came down for Dia de Muertos six years ago and traveled all around the country and um, observed the traditions, took a lot of photographs, spent a lot of time with many beautiful families and, uh, and the story slowly began to emerge the, the more time we spent traveling. And how many people were with you on the team? Because it's a big movie. It's a big movie. Um, over six years, uh, so I think uh, in total of approximately 500. You already have an Oscar with Pixar and Toy Story 3. Do you think you're going to have an Oscar again with Coco? <laughs> I mean, we don't even think about that while we're making the movie. Um, and I don't even think about it now. I mean, I just, we, we, want, um, we just want people to hopefully enjoy this film and, uh, and have them think about it after it's over and maybe go home and you know, tell stories to their children about people that they loved who they hadn't spent, you know, who weren't, who aren't in the world anymore. Um, I think that's the most beautiful thing that could come from, from having made this movie and also sharing the beautiful culture and people of Mexico with the rest of the world. And now that you know uh, too much about this, this right. culture, do you have a, a day of the dead in, in your home too? We do. We, we have, um, all of us filmmakers and John Lasseter, we've been putting up our own ofrendas to our ancestors. And then at Pixar, um, we started putting up one for the whole company uh, a, a year ago or so, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And right now there's one set up in our lobby. And we invite everyone at the studio to bring in photos of their loved ones to share on the ofrenda. We also did something, um, I think, very beautiful with the movie. If people see the movie, we encourage them to stay to the very end of the credits because at the end of the credits, we have a kind of a digital ofrenda. We had everybody in the studio, as well as actors and different people who helped us make the movie, give us a photo of somebody who was special to them, who helped inspire them and, and encourage them to do what they do. And um, we have this lovely image of all of these hundreds and hundreds of, of inspirational loved ones appear at the end of the film. And what was the hardest part of making this movie? Well, the hardest part, honestly, is always for all of our films, working out the story, because you could have the most amazing characters and the most beautiful setting, but if you don't have a compelling story um, and characters that you believe, and it takes a long time to create characters you believe, but um, so that, that's the hardest part. But then, secondly, this is a huge film, huge scope. Yeah, it's a, it's a big adventure through the land of the dead. We had to invent and create a land of the dead and populate it with thousands and thousands of skeletons. And we had to figure out how to animate skeletons. We'd never done that at the studio before and try to figure out how to make them be appealing and not scary. And um, there were just enormous challenges. And, and there was a lot of music in this movie, not just the soundtrack, but a lot of songs and um, different musical elements and far more music than we've ever had in a Pixar film before. So that was its own unique challenge. Lots of challenges, but challenges that we loved, and everybody was on board with, uh, because they were passionate about bringing this movie to the world. And how do you pick the songs, and how do you pick the people who are working with you? Um, well, we've worked with many different people in the course of making the movie. Um, there's a, a, a musician named Camilo Lara, who has a group called the Mexican Institute of Sound. I was a big fan of his before I made this movie, and his music was very inspirational to me. We brought him on to be a music advisor and to travel with us and teach us about Mexican music. And I ended up using some of his music in the movie. Um, and he's a cameo. <laughs> he does have a cameo. Um, we also worked with Bobby uh, Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez, uh, a songwriting team who I, I've been friends with for years. And we wanted them to be a part of this somehow. And they created the beautiful song, Remember Me, Recuérdame. Um, uh, Adrian Molina, who is my co-director and the, one of the screenwriters, 
Um, he and Jermaine Franco wrote a number of other original songs for the, for the movie. Uh, and we also tried to use some traditional Mexican song. It's a whole, lot of music. The movie has uh, <laughs> music in its DNA. Yeah. And I want you to invite the people from Paraguay to see Coco in December. Hello, everyone in Paraguay. I'm Lee Unkrich, the director of Coco. And I'm Darla Anderson, the producer of Coco. And we encourage you to take all of your family, bring your, your mother, your father, your grandparents, your children, Go see the movie together. It's about family. It's lovely, and I think you'll love seeing it all together as a family. Yeah, and buy popcorn.